Okay, welcome viewers to episode number six of our Flatten the Curve video blog. I am Daniel Fung from the Move Up Communications Department, and today I have the pleasure to be joined by one of the most impressive young union activists that I have ever personally met. <clears throat> she is co-chair of Move Up's Youth Action Committee and recently just became the newest board member. So welcome, Milena Collet, and thank you for taking the time today. Thanks for inviting me, Daniel. So Melina, you and I have worked together quite a bit um, because I know you're a regular when it comes to our local voice magazine for our members. And in a recent edition, you actually wrote about how you first started becoming a young activist. But for the people who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I was hired by the United Steel Workers in 2012 when I was just 21. I didn't know much about unions at all at the time. Uh, but it was my first unionized position and the pay and benefits were way better than anything else I had experienced. So I was just happy to, to get the job. Uh, it took a little while of working there to see that, you know, even though it was a union, they're still the employer. So um, I decided that it was time for me to get involved. And I emailed someone at the move up office asking if they had a young workers committee I could join and they did. So I quickly jumped right in and I haven't looked back. That's awesome. Um, so let's just dive right into it uh, because I want to talk about the effects of COVID-19. Um, I want to know about how things have been for you, not just from a uh, personal uh, perspective or a work perspective, but also how COVID-19 has impacted you as a youth activist, because I know that you're someone who's always active. You're out at rallies, you're involved in different events for young members here at Move Up, uh, but um, not just here at Move Up though, uh, but also in your capacity as chair of the uh, BC Federation of Labor's Young Workers Committee. So I want to know how has things changed now with COVID-19 essentially forcing us to do pretty much everything online? Yeah, it's definitely been strange um, changing from in-person meetings to online meetings, but luckily technology is so good that we've still been able to pretty much get most of our work done um, and stay safe while at home. Um, otherwise, obviously all of our events that we would normally plan for the spring like our grants law sit-in and camp jubilee have been postponed um, or cancelled so we don't have a ton of uh, things that we would normally do so we've mainly been discussing um, some campaigns that uh, the affiliate unions have going on like the pay for frontline workers from ufcw and um, mainly just checking in with how people are doing because this is obviously something that none of us have experienced before so I think that's really the most important thing that we're still keeping touch and still seeing each other's faces uh, by Zoom or go to meeting or whatever it may be. So it's been good so far, actually. And I think we're really lucky that we can stay home and stay safe while still meeting. So um, and obviously uh, keeping in touch uh, with the uh, different committee members uh, is really important. And you and Francis Lamil as co-chairs of the uh, Youth Action Committee here at Move Up, uh, both of you are just fantastic um, uh, young activists. I want to talk a little bit more about that committee. <clears throat> um, that's something that you've been involved in uh, with for quite some time, as you mentioned, um, you know, since the time really that you started uh, uh, where you're working now. And so for those of uh, for people who don't know, Tell us a little bit about the committee and how do people get more involved? Yeah, so the uh, Youth Action Committee is for members of Move Up that are 30 years old or younger. Um, anyone can join. We love having people from all different certifications. Um, our main focus is trying to engage other young workers in the union and the importance of getting involved. Um, yeah, normally we would be planning events and courses, uh, Union 101 course we've taught in the past. Obviously, all of that's kind of been put on hold for now, but um, it's a really fun way to get your feet wet in uh, the union. And I would recommend any young workers, if you have any questions or anything, uh, it just you should join or ask me any questions. We'd love to have you on the committee. So you mentioned it's uh, for Move Up members who are 30 years and younger. Sadly, I'm a little bit too old for that now. Just a tiny <laughs> little bit, but <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit of a uh, story about myself. Um, because for me personally, um, this is my real first involvement in a union environment uh, in my career. I was very briefly a member of QP in my last position. Uh, but for the first 10 or so years of my career, I never had the opportunity to be involved in a union. And I actually had no idea that groups like this existed. So um, I think it's really such a great opportunity and one that I wish I could have had the um, the luxury or the fortune to get involved in when I was younger. 
Um, you mentioned some of the uh, different events um, that you take uh, part in. You mentioned Grants Law just now. You also mentioned uh, Camp Jubilee. Can you tell me about some of the other moments that you've been most proud of being a young activist and some of the causes that are most near and dear to you? Well, something that I didn't think I would enjoy, but it turns out I really absolutely love is facilitating. Um, I hate public speaking, or I used to. I've gotten better over the years. Um, still not my favorite thing, but, you know, comes with the job. Um, yeah, I, I love facilitating, and I've been fortunate enough to teach the Union 101 course um, at our Move Up Job Seminar last year, Job Search Seminar. And, um, you know, we did a day trip, and it was the first time that most of the um, folks in the class had been on a picket line, all the young workers. And we all just left there, you know, really understanding what solidarity was and the importance of um, being unionized and everything. So that was just such a nice moment for me and seeing all these people then coming to that course, you know, they're already job stewards, but putting their name forward for executive council and coming out to everything else. So that's been really one of my favorite things that I've gotten to done or do over the years. You mentioned about um, <clears throat> uh, young people joining executive council. Uh, let me switch gears a little bit slightly then, uh, because a few months ago, uh, vacancy opened up on our executive board and you threw your hat into the ring to run for that open position. And I know it wasn't your first time running, but uh, this was the, um, but this time you were successful. So obviously, first of all, congratulations. Um, that's wonderful for you. And I know you've been um, really aiming for that position for a while. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what that whole process was like for you? and what it has meant for you to be involved in our union now at the board level. Yeah, thank you. Um, third time's the charm for me uh, to get on board. Um, I felt like I would do a good job um, being on the board level, and there's no other young workers on the board. So I thought, you know, we need to have a young worker voice at the board. So I wanted to put my name forward. Um, and obviously, I'm really proud to represent the labor group members. We're kind of you know, obviously, we're just mainly a bunch of smaller certs in the move up world, but, you know, we're just as important as everybody else. So I am really proud to represent those members. And um, I would encourage if anyone else wants to put their name forward that they should. Don't be scared. It is definitely scary putting your name forward, but um, I encourage everyone to do so. And you're absolutely right. Um, every voice matters. And, um, and that's what we've always um, said here in this union. <coughs> um, you're obviously no stranger to our union's governance uh, because you've been an executive counselor as well in the past. Now, I know when a lot of young people start their careers, uh, understandably, the focus is on going to be wanting to do their jobs well and wanting to advance in their careers. But you can actually miss out on a lot if you don't fully explore your surroundings. And that includes learning about and getting involved with your union. So what advice would you give to young people now who are in the early stages of their career uh, and they just happen to have gotten a job where they became a move up member? I would say um, as soon as you're done probation, you should join a committee, become a job steward, put your name forward for executive council. Um, the, you just can learn so much um, from the union. And even if you don't really want to go the job cert route, even just taking the course is just such, you know, valuable knowledge to have. and about your rights and everything in the collective agreement. Um, I'm so glad that I decided to send that first email and I hope that you know anyone watching this will do that as well. And so um, here's a good opportunity where I want um, to be able to plug um, not only uh, involvement as a job steward, but, uh, involvement as a youth action committee member as well. So for people who want to get involved in the youth action committee, uh, how can they do that? Um, yeah, if they want to get involved, they can send me an email or reach out to me. I have uh, my own union Instagram account. Uh, they can reach out to me there too. Uh, we'd love to have you, obviously. And um, and I think you can also email uh, at yeac at moveuptogether.ca, and that will also get to the uh, youth action committee. Um, yeah. Well, for people who are interested in being a job steward, uh, you can email your vice president, um, either that's uh, Annette Toss, uh, Risa Carnabush or Chrissy Cicerenko, depending on which unit you're in. Um, and the final thing I want to chat with you today before our time is up, um, and that's actually related to one of our campaigns that's going on right here at Move Up. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the youth groups are very involved in many different campaigns uh, going on in the labor movement. Um, but uh, Fund Transit Now has been one of the campaigns that Move Up has been working on uh, really since COVID-19 hit. And um, as many people will know, 
uh, about a month ago now, uh, TransLink and Coast Mountain Bus had announced that they were planning some pretty significant service cuts, um, as well as uh, plans to lay off a number of staff. Uh, thankfully, in mid-May, uh, thanks to the work of our provincial government here, they stepped in and they were able to work out an agreement that will allow uh, those cuts to not happen and those layoffs to not happen. Uh, but one thing that we haven't really seen yet, and that really is an integral part of making sure that our system isn't in jeopardy in the long run, uh, and that's also true for uh, public transit systems across the country, and that's a commitment from the federal government to fund public transit. Um, now, we know transit is so important for many groups, uh, from low-income workers, people with disabilities, seniors, um, but can you tell me what the use perspective is on how important public transit is? Yeah, public transit is very important. Um, with, you know, living costs being so high, especially in the lower mainland, a lot of folks can't afford a vehicle or they're choosing not to just to be more environmentally friendly. So they rely on public transit, you know, to do everything. So I think we definitely need to make it a priority in the future to um, improve the system because some folks right now, you know, they might not want to have a car. They might want to do the environmentally friendly thing, but they need a car because it'll take them an hour and a half to get somewhere where driving only takes 30 minutes. So I think we definitely need to make that a priority in the future, or right now, actually. Uh, and so, Belina, um, before we sign off, is there any other messages that you want to give to our union group? Um, you have the opportunity. The floor is yours. Uh, all I have to say, really, is just get involved. I'm 100% positive you won't regret it. Uh, the people I've met um, in the labor movement have become some of my uh, great friends, and it's such a great networking opportunity. Uh, you can learn so much. It's great to have your own voice at the table. Um, yeah, get involved. Awesome. Uh, and again, as always, it's so awesome to talk to you. Um, all the best to you, uh, your family, and of course, all of our move up members working with you at the USW 1944. And I'm really looking forward to being able to see you again, hopefully in person uh, when this pandemic is all over. So uh, stay safe and we will talk to you again soon. Okay, thanks so much for having me, Daniel.